Today's Take 5 with the Saints, April the 20th, is Toyohiko Kigawa. You may not know him as a household name, but if you have any knowledge of 20th century Japanese history, particularly social and religious history, Kagawa's name is one that will be prominent in your mind. He was a Christian who became a social reformer during some times of great turmoil in Japanese history, particularly after the 1923 devastating earthquake that hit Tokyo and much of that central part of Japan, as well as the rebuilding efforts after Japan surrendered to the Allies after World War II. Kagawa was influential in his social gospel's impact upon improving the living and working and spiritual conditions of the poor among the Japanese population. Our scripture that goes with his feast day comes out of Philippians chapter 1, verses 12 through 20. I want you to know, beloved, that what has happened to me has actually helped to spread the gospel so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to everyone else that my imprisonment is for Christ, and most of the brothers and sisters, having been made confident in the Lord by my imprisonment, dare to speak the word with greater boldness and without fear. Some proclaim Christ from envy and rivalry, but others from goodwill. These proclaim Christ out of love, knowing that I have been put here for the defense of the gospel. The others proclaim Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, but intending to increase my suffering in my imprisonment. What does it matter? Just this, that Christ is proclaimed in every way, whether out of false motives or true, and in that I rejoice. Yes, and I will continue to rejoice. For I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance. It is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be put to shame in any way, but that by my speaking with all boldness, Christ will be exalted now as always in my body, whether by life or by death. Toyohiko Kagawa was born in 1888, the son of a prominent Buddhist politician and his concubine in Kobe, Japan, but both of his parents died uh, by the time he was age four, and so he was raised by Presbyterian missionaries, and as such, from his earliest memories, was exposed daily to the routines of Christian prayer and life, and at the age of 15, he was baptized and gave his life to Christ in a conversion experience in which he prayed repeatedly from that time forward for the rest of his life in his daily prayers, O oh God, make me like Christ. Through the support of those missionaries, he was able to go to the United States to travel for studies at Princeton as well as theological seminaries in Japan. But when he finished with seminary, he decided it wasn't for necessarily ordained ministry in parish settings that he was called, but he was called to bring the gospel to the poor of his native Japan. So he returned to Kobe, and from the period of around 1910 to 1924, he basically lived in a six-by-six-foot square slum house in the middle of the slums of Kobe. And in that, he was someone who was a social organizer helping to create trade unions and credit unions among all sorts of workers, including dock workers, factory laborers, and farmers who were in the area. His work in creating trade unions in particular ran him afoul of the Japanese government and of the elites of Japan because, well, it was an illegal activity. And while Japan did not have a strict caste system like India, for instance, there still was this expectation that everybody had their place in which they belonged. So he was not looked at very favorably. But he was more than simply a social organizer. In all of his work, it was done with the background and with the direct message that the gospel was being proclaimed in every way possible, just as we hear in Paul's words of him proclaiming the gospel even in his imprisonment under surveillance and living in the most nondescript places of Kobe. He was able to share the gospel of Jesus Christ and to show people that indeed the light of Christ 
could shine forth even in the darkest corners of the world. His work got him imprisoned on a couple of times himself, but he also was someone who gained the respect because of his skills in bringing people together in social settings and in trade unions from, ironically of all places, the Japanese government. After the great earthquake of 1923, the government called on him to help be one of the leaders of its efforts to rebuild Tokyo in particular, but also other places that had suffered from uh, the destruction of the earthquake. In addition to all of his work, he was also an outspoken pacifist, which as you can imagine with the rise of the imperial government leading up to World War II, did not earn him again many favors with the Japanese hierarchy. He also was an advocate for universal suffrage, and in this case in Japan, it was universal male suffrage because, again, you had to be of a certain class in Japan to vote. And, of course, he was also advocating uh, at that time for women's rights, particularly in the realm of voting as well. He was a Christian socialist, which that word, of course, has become very demonized, the socialist word, that is, and perhaps Christian, too, to another extent in our vocabulary today. But his belief was that all people were deserving to find their place, both in the work of the government of the people, but also in the life of the kingdom of God. During World War II, he was uh, spied upon almost constantly by the Japanese government, but yet at the end of World War II, he was appointed as head of the country's social welfare programs to help the country be rebuilt. Through all of this, however, Toyohiko Kagawa saw himself first and foremost, the first and the last of all of his work as a Christian evangelist. He wrote, Christ alone can make all things new. The spirit of Christ must be the soul of all real social reconstruction. So in many ways, Kagawa was on par with another one of his contemporaries in another part of Asia, Mahatma Gandhi, as far as being able to bring revolutionary social change, but with a deeply spiritual element tied to it that was not just simply bringing a new government or new structures of power to play, but rather in helping people find meaningful existence in the world that they exist in, but also, in Kagawa's case, meaningful existence in knowing that the God who created them continued to love them and was present with them in every possible way. Thanks for joining me today. Our saint of the uh, for tomorrow, April the 21st, is Saint Anselm, one of the great archbishops of Canterbury of all time. Look forward to seeing you then. Take care.